just that trouble over there. Good evening, and welcome to the January 9, 2017 uh, Board of Selectmen meeting. Uh, we'll begin with the signing of the warrant. I'll move. Seconded. I'll also approve that unanimous. Next, we have the minutes of December 19th. Motion. Seconded. I'll also vote in favor. That's unanimous. Next, I have invitation to speak. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak who's not scheduled for an item on the agenda? Not hearing anybody. We'll move on to the next item. We have public hearings and scheduled appointments. Next, uh, first off, we have uh, Carolina's uh, Latin Restaurant and Common Vitular License. Yeah, right up to the front. So through a notice that this board had sent to the owners, and welcome, welcome. Welcome, thank you. To the owners of, uh, of Carolina's Restaurant, um, we invited them here to, to review their application for a common vitular license. Um, as would be typical, we had reached out to various department heads, and I want to read from that before we begin. Uh, the building commissioner indicates this is an allowable use with um, accessible restrooms um, and an occupant load of 14. Um, town planner, okay, no change to actual use. <clears throat> Tax collector indicates there's no outstanding taxes. Town treasurer has no, uh, indicates no liens or concerns. Fire chief has no issues and police chief has no issues or concerns. Um, so we'll hear from, uh, and if you'd like to introduce yourself, um, why don't we start? Um, she's the owner, my name is William, and uh, I mean Mar uh, Maria, I'm sorry, she's the owner for the, I mean, the restaurant. And uh, we didn't have no complaints yet for the store, we okay right now. And uh, we are applying for you know, to have a nice restaurant and keep going. That All right, and right Maria now. is the applicant and you're translating for her? Yes, for her, yes. Okay, very good. Yes, and she's currently residing at 106 Hayward Street? Yes. And could you, for the benefit of this board, uh, pronounce her last name for me? My last name or her? First. Maria Sela. Sela? Maria Sela Caguana. Caguana? Caguana, Sela Caguana. Caguana, yes. Caguana, yes. Okay, and your last name is for the benefit of the record? Uh, G A M B O Jimbo. Okay, and uh, you're looking for common vitular. Could you tell us a little bit about what you hope to open up at 94 Main Street? Mm -hmm. Oh, they say they, 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 they open the store to secure the customers, try to, to do something, to make some business, you know. Um, so it's your hope to open a restaurant there from the hours of uh, 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Monday through Sunday? Yes. Okay. And um, any experience running a restaurant? Uh, well, I do. Uh, well, well, which I'm working with him. Uh, I come from New York. I used to work in uh, Manhattan. So okay. So I'm trying to help them how to run the store because I've been working for almost 11 years well, in New York. Enough, so... That's what I'm teaching them, how, you know, to open, to close, how to set up the store. So they, they're trying to do the right way. Yeah. So we don't get, you know, like when the car health department or whatever, they they trying to learn everything from the start to, to open, to close, to leave the chairs open, clean clean the floors, the fridge, you know, make sure good. So when the customers, they come, everything is ready. We have no complaints with the customers. and. Um, so is there any prior experience, experience from the individuals running, uh, the applicant running uh, a restaurant? Yeah. They have experience running a restaurant? Yes. Uh, where? Uh, my bro old brother, he's there too. So so they when they start opening the store, so they, they always, they ask first, you know, to have the right people to, to be with them so they can start opening the store because for me, they are my friends. They come from my country, almost from my town. So we don't want to just come open and we don't know how to run the store. For us. So yeah, but I'm asking if the applicant, Maria, has experience running a restaurant. Yeah, yeah she, she used right. to work in a restaurant too, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. all right, so prior work experience yeah. in a restaurant, yeah. okay. All right, I'll go to the board members. Uh, Brian, any comments or thoughts? Yeah, no questions. Good luck with everything. Oh, thank, okay. you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, same with me, Mr. Chairman, good luck. Thank you, thank you. 
Okay. Um, all the board, all the various departments have weighed in and uh, uh, indicated that there are no issues or concerns. I don't have any personally either. I um, just wish you good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so I'll ask for a motion. I'll move to approve. Second it. I'll vote in favor. That's unanimous. We're all set. And now what you have to do is see the selectman's office and specifically the town administrator uh, tomorrow tomorrow morning or at your earliest convenience. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Very good. That's it. Well, yes. You. Good. Good thank luck you. with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Next, we have town council regarding marijuana legislation. <coughs> good evening, Jerry. How are you? Good to see you. I've got uh, a couple of things I'll give to you just to use as reference here. I have an outline of options that are available under the law, the new law. <coughs> Thank you. And also, I'll give you a copy of what we'll talk about a little bit, which is a draft of um, possible zoning bylaw that I know the planning board has under consideration. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That also has a copy of the zoning map that would be applicable to the uh, planning board's possible uh, bylaw. But you'll see, I start out by giving you. Under the new law, the definitions that apply here, um, there's really three categories um, falling under marijuana establishments. There's a marijuana cultivator as one class of a business that could be on its own. Uh, marijuana product manufacturer could a be a business without the cultivation and without the retail sales. And then a marijuana retailer altogether come under the category of marijuana establishments. But somebody could seek to have different combinations of that. Somebody might just want to be a cultivator, somebody might just want to be a wholesaler distributor, uh, somebody might, a lot of these operations might want to be all three. So those are the ones that are governed. Uh, now in terms of the options under the new law, and of course the new law, as you know, it's, uh, it came by virtue of a, a citizen's petition, so it's not the typical law that's um, drafted uh, and vetted by a lot of uh, legislators and lawyers in the legislature, so it's got some problems in terms of of, uh, that a lot of people are still trying to figure out what it means and there may be uh, legislative changes that clarify some of it. But among the options available under the law, you see one option that some cities and towns are considering is a total ban on um, any combination of these facilities. A ban on, if you're going to do the broadest ban possible, a ban on marijuana establishments. Uh, that can be done, but in the words of the, again, not well drafted statute, only by virtue of a, a bylaw and a vote of the voters. Uh, which <coughs> we all know what the vote of the voters means, but it's an odd phrase to use and how to right. get that on the ballot. Nobody quite understands how to do that yet because there's not a separate authority to do that, but that will be clarified, I'm sure, there's time to do that. So that's uh, the broadest option. Uh, and and what, if, if this board was interested in that, you'd, we'd draft a bylaw implementing such a ban, get a vote at town meeting on the bylaw, and also get it on the ballot for the annual election, hopefully uh, once those processes are clarified. Um, that's the most exclusive option, if you will. There's also the ability to limit the total number of establishments, but some of that requires a vote, too. Um, if you're going to have less than, in the words of the, of the statute, 20 percent of all non-pouring liquor license. Now, um, that's package stores, mm -hmm. and we have seven all-alcoholic package stores, so 20 percent of that is 1.4, so, you know, that's, if you're going to do less than and two, in essence, you would need to have an, an addition of vote of the voters. However, there's debate as to whether that includes the um, beer and wine licenses, and we have 11 of those, so that changes what the 20 percent is. But that's among the questions that sort of have to be answered uh, in the future by the legislature, hopefully. Um, number three, um, you can limit the, if you're going to limit the number of establishments to two or more, so we're going to have a limit somehow in a general bylaw, not a zoning bylaw, but probably a general bylaw, say there can only be uh, three establishments in the town of Milford. That could be done by a bylaw without a town meeting vote. So at that level, you could simply do that by a bylaw. But as you see what I, from what I gave you, the, the uh, planning board is already considering uh, a bylaw that was drafted by a town planner, which <coughs> would limit the, any establishments of all the categories 
to the same districts where the medical marijuana is allowed now. So the industrial B and the industrial C districts, and you have a plan, I think, showing you what that covers. Without any limitation on numbers, so we wouldn't have any concern about if, if, we, if the town took that approach, which is to pass a bylaw, that would clear up any problem that people would have, if they do, with marijuana establishments on Main Street, it's downtown, um, you know, there's some fear of there being a lot of head shops downtown. Couldn't happen, or couldn't happen here on on, uh, on South Main Street. Couldn't happen down here. Only in the, dis the, the districts that the IB and the IC districts, where you would typically find, frankly, if you're going to have a cultivation or a distribution facility, that's where those are going to be. Um, I, I can't speak for the people who have the license for the medical marijuana now, but I presume they will seek to uh, either convert the whole thing to uh, a, a cultivation, a distribution, and retail, and and medical. Yeah, so I expect that they will. Seek a license. I, I really have no idea, but I would expect they would. I would expect so. Yeah, yeah. But well, we've gotten blind calls from a number of people. When, when can I get my marijuana license? Uh, as you may be aware, the legislature recently extended that time. Thus, there's, there's, there's a considerable amount of time here, and that flows into the um, where I discussed the zoning alternatives. We, a few of us, had talked briefly about impossible moratorium, and you, and you do a moratorium in a zoning perspective when you need more time to, to plan. Uh, and there's been discussion among town councils and others and city solicitors as to whether or not to do that. And the consensus is that the Attorney General probably wouldn't approve a moratorium because we have so much time. The deadline has al already been extended now, I think, for another six months, and I want to think it's till April. I may even have it in here. Till April 1st of 2018, before the first applications can be made. So we feel generally as town council and the city solicitors, the AG just simply wouldn't approve a moratorium because there's plenty of time for every city in town to plan for this. Um, again, the, the, what the planning board has now uh, wouldn't require um, a ballot question. It would recognize the, uh, obviously, the desire of the legislation to at least allow the medical marijuana facilities to have a, such a license. Wouldn't limit the number. If, if, if people could have three or four valid um, sites for this kind of activity in those districts, that would be fine. Uh, it might be in some sense, though, self-limiting by virtue of, of those areas you're not going to get. Um, a lot of, you know, the kinds of uh, walk-in trade that you, you might get on an establishment that was established on Main Street. So um, those are broadly the options that you have in terms of the siting issues, uh, whether or not where to allow them and, and how much. And again, right now, and I can't, I'm not speaking for the planning board, but they seem to be going down that route towards limiting to those districts. If your board wants to, though, consider uh, the ban, then we've got to follow the process, is put a general bylaw together banning it and put it out there for the voters to see if the voters approve it uh, once they figure out how to do that. Um, other things that you need to consider um, is there can be general bylaws going beyond the question of banning and citing. The, the statute is, dra is drafted in such a way that it specifically allows cities and towns to have bylaws, in the words of the statute, that impose reasonable safeguards on the operation of marijuana establishments, provided they're not unreasonably impractical in, in other language. And that uh, would be a general bylaw that would simply govern the manner in which they're operated. Uh, and, and for that, I'd suggest the board consult with the police chief on that, see what kind of protections he might want uh, in terms of wherever they are allowed. There's a lot of uh, regulatory protections on medical marijuana, as you may right. recall. So they may want to from adopt from there certain pieces. And Absolutely. And in fact, in the planning board's article, too, it, <coughs> it tracks the medical marijuana in that if it's going to be allowed in those two districts, it's going to be by special permit, and it would be subject to the same conditions in terms of setbacks from residences, from residential areas that are within the same bylaw right now. So that was an important part I didn't mention. Okay. It wouldn't be a matter of right within those di districts. It would be a matter of special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals, just like the medical marijuana. Uh, and again, we had those hearings on that. A couple of years ago, they did a good job, pretty comprehensive in terms of the protections. But you might, going back to the general bylaw, if there's an interest in that, you might check with the police department and see if they're, in fact, interested in some sort of general bylaw restrictions on how these are operated. Uh, there's even ability to limit signage and other things through a general bylaw. Um, so, you know, beyond what we might normally do, those abilities are in there. Um, as I mentioned in there, Board of Health also has the ability to regulate, just as they do tobacco. Um, and, you know, they, they will, I'm sure, consider that on their own. Uh, you might suggest that they take a look at it as to whether or not they think there should be any restrictions. We, we've all also already, uh, some cities and towns are concerned about um, 
taking action to ban and smoking marijuana in public places and the public streets. Uh, we actually have a bylaw that does that right now. It's been in effect for a number of years. Right. Um, so we're in the same good. way that you can't. Same way as alcohol. Walk down right. Main Street swag, uh, swigging a gallon of tequila. Precisely. We banned that 50 years ago. And a few years ago, as it turns out, we probably at the Chiefs' behest. We'll stop doing that. Yeah. You, you have to stop doing it, Bill. We've been telling you that for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, the last thing uh, to consider is a possible article for the next special town meeting in terms of the ability to tax. Uh, cities and towns have the ability, the local option, to whether or not to tax up to 2% of the uh, retail sales on, on marijuana. But to do that, we have to pass a bylaw, up to 2% of the sales. And that's local taxation? That's local, right. That's, in a sense, it would be like our hotel motel tax, which I've forgotten the percentage, but you know, we adopted it some years ago, set a percentage, increased it later on. Uh, this one is only up to 2%. So you know, your board should consider whether it's, you know, do we want to do it at all? And if so, do we want to do 1% or 2%? And so for, for benefit, Jerry, and I appreciate you coming in, I, I know there are a lot of moving parts to this. I know the legislators are uh, looking at different laws, and already uh, not soon after this citizen's uh, petition, or lack of a better term, yeah, referendum, that's what it was. Uh, um, brought the uh, retail sales uh, forward, in a, along with a host of other things. Um, the question then becomes, I think, for the for the board and for the community, to what extent does the community want to have uh, retail sales uh, sales establishments, and uh, if at all, um, we understand the referendum to be uh, broader in the sense that it allows it in the state, and uh, similar to I was re just reading an article about uh, Colorado, where. Uh, the, the retail sale of marijuana is allowed in 30 percent of the communities. Right. You would think it's from our readings that it might be bigger than that, but right. uh, 70 percent prohibited. And uh, that may change over time as well, but that's the way they came out of the gate. And so the question for the community is a community standard question is to what extent, if any, does Milford want it sold here or would they prefer it sold in other towns but not Milford? Because yeah. there's always that option to say, okay, not in my backyard, but in others' backyards it's fine, and it still has all the components of the rest of the law that people can have it, have, you know, non-criminal and grow it, cultivate it. Um, I'll, I'll reserve any questions I have because I want to get to the board members. Uh, go to Will, Will first, just uh, break it up. Uh, Will, any thoughts, comments? Uh, yeah, actually, um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I have a pretty simple philosophy on, on this. Um, I would not support a moratorium. I also don't want head shops up and down Main Street. Um, I think following the planning board and having the places located where the uh, medical marijuana establishments are is great. I've taken a tour of that place, and I know that they, um, they got involved early with the police chief and did all the security options that they're supposed to. And um, I, think that, I think personally that's the way to go. Okay. So I really appreciate, Jerry, you giving us all the options. I didn't know we would have them, you know, this quick and uh, spelled out as, uh, as easily. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, I just wanted to be plain spoken that, that that's where I am. Sure. Um, again, I certainly don't support a moratorium, but I think having um, the planning board involved and having them zoned is the, is the way to go. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, Will. Brian? Um, yeah, Jerry, thanks for putting together this memo. And, you know, as I looked through the eventual what was passed and the the bylaw the uh, referendum question um, and, and your memo initially referenced a date that uh, of October 1st 2018 and I know there's a number of different dates in there's here a whole for bunch different of different things, things. Exactly. and I was trying to find how yeah. that related well you know I'm gonna give you now I actually did this and I let me take it to you because I had given you each a copy of the entire initiative petition which had all the dates in it well right I, what I did is I took that redid it, and where the dates changed, I put in the new dates. Okay. Oh, okay. That's gonna, All right. And that's going to help you look at it. Oh, I see. Okay. All right. Well, so this is good. Page 16 and 23 where a lot of those dates are. So I, you see right there, I crossed out the old date and put in the new date that came through the new legislation. Okay. So this, this, these are all the, okay. So it's, it's throughout the course of the statute, I guess. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, so if you look at page... Oh, everything gets pushed back. I'm seeing... Everything seems, essentially is pushed back by six I'm months. looking at page 23, page 24. Uh, I have a blank page, but that's... Um, so you, you, you've got all the... All the new the, the extension are, periods are yeah. added out. Yeah. Okay. And as, as, you know, as you know from the statute, there's a lot of requirements that uh, the state is going to have to go through to adopt regulations that are going to cover this wherever they happen to be, uh, both from the commission that will be issuing the new <coughs> licenses and then there will be detailed regulations on how they operate. So, you know, there's time to consider all that, a lot of time, really. Um, you know, from the local perspective, in terms of the town of Milford, um, you've got a lot of overlap here in terms of different departments and entities that may have an interest in this. Um, there, there are areas to discuss, not only whether it's, you know, zoning or a general bylaw somehow adding more restrictions or regulations that might otherwise come down from the state. You've got the tax situation, which, fr from what I'm hearing, that that's going to be changed also. It, yeah. There's, yeah, there's a lot of feeling in, in, in Boston to, to change that because the total tax is much less than um, what's occurring in Colorado, for example. So you mean like taking that 2% option and perhaps increasing the percentage? I, yeah, I think that I'm not so I'm not so sure that they're talking so much about the local. But what I'm hearing is that they're looking to increase all the taxes, you know, up from the because I think it's a total of 12 percent. Colorado is taxing out something to 28, 29 percent. So I, I think there's there's the the point is there are going to be some more changes coming down the line on this um, as different concerns come forward. Um, you know, from a local point of view, you know, you know, this might be something that the board might want to consider asking a, a, a task force to look at because I see interest with the police department here. I see interest with the planning department. I see interest with the Board of Health. Uh, there's probably interest in the business community, whether it be, you know, something that IDC, uh, or something. IDC could uh, be a representative on or maybe the Chamber of Commerce. And I'm sure there are some community members that, you know, would, would want to um, maybe have some say on it as well. So, you know, as we try to think about how we want this to integrate into the town of Milford, if at all, um, and, and there's certainly time because it, it, it has been pushed back, it might be something that this board considers uh, asking for um, some volunteers to, to serve on a, a task force to come up with some possible recommendations, trying to cover all of those all of those different areas. Okay, that's a good point. So there are lots of opportunities, and there's plenty of time. There is, and there is no doubt going to be additional legislation that are going to make changes to what we have in front of us yeah, today. I, I think they have to. They got to yeah. clarify a few of those key points. With the 20%, Jerry, my read on this is <coughs> the range of opportunities can be, let me see if I have this right, it can be zero in terms of a moratorium should it go through and pass both town meeting and a, uh, and a referendum, and a referendum yep. vote locally. Right. Uh, or the other option is it can be, I'm not sure how you create a point four retail uh, establishment. Don't, yeah. I don't think rounding up from point four is anything a math yeah. mathematician would do. So um, we're going to limit it to one. That would require a vote also. You know, we're going to limit it effectively to one establishment, just the, the medical marijuana that's already there. That would take a vote also, the vote of the people. Because it's below the threshold of the point Well, no, actually, it actually specifies in the legislation that if you're going to have less than the actual number of medical mar marijuana facilities in your community, the same or less, then you have to get a vote on that. So one or one would, if we're going to limit it to one, sort of anticipating the medical marijuana, that would take a vote also. If you're going to have less than that 20 percent, however you measure that 20 percent, that would take a vote also. If you're going to allow more than that 20 percent, which is either 20 percent of 7 or 20 percent of 18, I really don't know which. Right. Uh, if you're going to have less than that 20 percent, that would take a vote also. Okay. Because the the, the but they just uh, but doing that through the zoning, uh, there's no limitations. So because in theory you could have 25 of them if they can meet the requirements and get the special permits from the zoning board of appeals and being those districts. So. 
if you're just going to rely upon that sort of to, to restrict them to those districts and that being the sort of self-regulation, then you wouldn't have to be concerned. Yeah, let me about tell it. you my, uh, my thinking, and I'm not necessarily uh, stuck on it. I, I agree with some of the comments made by board members. I think uh, with the referendum having passed statewide, I think total moratorium is uh, not something uh, even having passed uh, through local voters makes sense. Having said that, though, um, controlling it solely by uh, zoning uh, may allow 25 or 30 of them, and I'm not sure that even with the voters that approved it, they would want you know Milford to become the marijuana capital of the Mass of Massachusetts. So, you know, we just we just talked about the extremes of the spectrum, and uh, somewhere in between there is I think the right answer, uh, and I think uh, it's going to take. Um, going if you're going to if, I, if you're going to have a limitation on the numbers, which you could probably validly do it around five or six, you know, depending on what the interpretation was on the twenty percent. Um, you could do two things. You could do two things. You could have your zoning bylaw that allowed it in those districts, and you could have a general bylaw that says, in any event, no more than five or no more than six. Or you could do it by categories too. You could allow different categories. Uh, so you could do that through a general bylaw as long as you stayed over that, wherever the threshold was. Which, if I go to the strict interpretation, it's two. It's two. That's okay. correct. All right. All right, Jerry. Um, yeah, I would. As always, I know that you're going to keep us abreast of uh, information as it changes in the legislation uh, and the, as the legislators uh, work through the process of fine-tuning it. Um, we'll know a guy there, uh, so uh, we'll be able to stay in touch Probably with that. Yeah. I'll be calling Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, like it, but yeah. And, um, you know, there's no decisions to be made tonight, although there's certainly – you know, uh, I think memo to the chief, member to the Board of Health, and uh, uh, this board ought to be talking about uh, when the final legislation comes in taxation. But the chief is certainly going to be a key player in the uh, general bylaw area and Board of Health, and we ought to make sure we're all on the same sheet of music. And, uh, you know. Maybe that's uh, uh, for now a couple of meetings with those individuals, seeing the directions they want to go. And, uh, you know, I would be guarded in the sense that Rick, um, I'm not asking for your participation. They've got to work closely with Jerry, um, but I, but I think starting the process of talking about what the what the existing legislation says and talking with Jerry is a good idea. So maybe at least. Um, Chief, count, uh, the chief, council, and board of health getting together just just makes sense, and uh, periodically meeting and keeping us up to date. And I would ask that that uh, just giving us the range of options, but not looking to set up options for the numbers. Let's uh, put that out of scope until the board has an opportunity to see the legislation no reason why they, they, that group would need to get into the numbers uh, just yet. And then I think what we can do as this legislation gets fine-tuned, follow on Brian's comments that uh, we get some uh, residents involved and uh, uh, IDC or others who are uh, business-minded uh, and serve that function. Any other comments from the board or thoughts? <coughs> Not hearing any. Uh, next, we'll go to the Town Administrator, Finance Director, Capital Plan. Thank you, Jerry. No, Appreciate no it. I know we're going to see you later. So, you Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome. So for the benefit of those that haven't had the, uh, the opportunity to meet you, the pleasure to meet both of you, uh, Chris Pilla, our, uh, our uh, treasurer, and Zach Taylor, our finance director, <coughs> here to review capital plans uh, along with town administrator. For the benefit of the board, a lot's gone on in the background, so I'll let them take over. Uh, yeah. I'll let I you may, give I'm, the introductions. Yeah, I will be brief. Um, Zach, Chris, and I uh, 
undertook again to continue updating the capital plan. Uh, we met with department heads, some uh, more than once, to discuss their capital plans and also to apprise them of how we want to approach um, putting together their capital plans in relation to their individual plans and to the overall uh, capital plan for each uh, town meeting. Uh, the book we have pr presented to you has some minor changes. Uh, one, we're trying to list the projects that we've completed that have been either completed or at least the appropriations have been made. Um, we're trying to list each department so that the board members and others can have easier access to individual departments uh, as to their capital plan and their lists. And we've also included a cover sheet which will allow the, each of us to review each year's total, each capital plan, as well as each department's total year by year uh, over a five-year um, process. A uh, couple of goals that Zach will go into in more detail, but we want to try to prioritize projects. Factors will include cost, the need for the project, whether it's an emergency, <coughs> the timing of the project. Uh, Zach will also try to put together a recommended funding source for the individual project. Uh, we want to try to distinguish between, uh, for example, a true maintenance request, building repair, for example, versus a cosmetic request. Uh, you know, uh, this, not a, I don't want to say the word wish list, but something that we would like to have but don't necessarily need at a given opportunity. The goal overall is to have a fair, objective process. We want to work, obviously, with the Finance Committee uh, to develop this capital plan. We'd like to all be on the same page. Um, I'm sure the board knows, the FinCom knows, it's a fluid, ever-changing plan, but we want to try to develop a consistent approach so that each department is aware of how we are going to approach this. Um, I want to thank Zach and Chris. They've worked very hard on this. I also want to thank uh, Town Engineer Mike Dean and Facilities Director Carlos Benjamin. Uh, they are the ones that have met with department heads also, and they're helping secure the quotes and the estimates for some of these projects. And then lastly, I want to thank the department heads themselves for getting on board uh, and are trying to help understand the process and how we want to approach it. So I think Zach and Chris will go into a little more detail uh, on, on the book we presented to you and how we want to go forward. Perfect. Thank you, Rick. Um, that was a very good introduction. Uh, I wanted to go into some of the objectives. Rick hit upon some of them there, but I want to go a little bit deeper, as he suggested. So first and uh, foremost, we wanted to create a fair and equitable process for um, all departments, committees, and boards. And uh, we spent a significant amount of time having meetings um, w with all of the above, and at many times, multiple meetings to, to really narrow it down. And on top of that, one of our uh, big priorities was to get individuals to understand that we're really trying to prioritize this as an overall big picture item and uh, I think some of the challenges might be that you, you have a committee that's very dedicated and to them their requests might be uh, the utmost priority however when you look at the grand scheme of things it, um, it may not fit in or there may be other issues whether uh, legal or statutorily required that um, that uh, have a higher priority or a higher ranking that must be done and therefore kind of uh, pushing the other items back. Um, a lot of what we were doing was educating. We wanted to reiterate the fact of keeping capital for October and uh, I think that message is well received but at the same time we wanted to educate why and um, some of the the true reasons why we do that is because we have a better sense of what our overall financial picture will be in October. Therefore, I leave in May uh, to have our focus solely on the operational budget, which is the largest appropriation we do on an annual basis and deserves the proper attention. Um, we created this ranking system and uh, kind of reiterate what Rick was saying. Again, we want, we're looking at state mandates, um, the legality, safety issues. We came across a good amount of cosmetic requests that some of which do appear here and uh, we wanted to make it clear to departments, committees, boards that just because they made the list doesn't necessarily mean this is written in stone and that it's going to happen. Um, we have to look at these a lot deeper on an annual basis. We have to make sure we have our long range planning in mind and in conjunction with our uh, fiscal policies. 
Um, another thing, back to educating uh, individuals, boards, committees, was to uh, share with them what we've really been trying to do here with our goal-based budget process. Um, so and it, you'll, I'll be back in front of this board in uh, weeks to come, I'm sure, to discuss in more detail what we want to set out as overall goals, not just at capital, stabilization levels. Uh, we pride ourselves with uh, excess levy capacity, which we would like to maintain in order to stabilize the, um, the tax rate. <coughs> and um, even other issues such as clearing snow and ice, which I think is very, very important. Um, also, we try to make this a manageable plan. As you can see from the summary, there are some numbers that fluctuate. Um, again, I, we would be looking at this on an annual basis and determining uh, if, if we can move forward or if we need to push back or bring certain items ahead, um, of more importance first. Um, I was hoping to go through some of the challenges that we did have throughout this process. Um, Obtaining quotes was quite difficult, so a, a lot of times when, when you're, uh, you're looking at these requests, you want to make sure that it, it's not at either extreme too low of an estimate or too high of an estimate, um, therefore maybe pushing something else off or having us reorganize the, um, the overall plan. And obtaining quotes could be difficult because you're asking a professional to come out and um, put together a thorough plan knowing that this may not happen for four years. So that's definitely been one of the challenges that we have had. Um, disagreements with priority settings, that certainly has been too. Um, some, of, some of the more difficult projects for, for us to understand, such as stormwater, that's been difficult. So uh, we, we literally have a meeting tomorrow to get a better handle on that. And that's one of the driving factors of why a couple of the years are um, rather high in comparison. But if we're looking at the overall five-year plan, we feel it's manageable. Again, we would have to be going into it um, annually and really reviewing the items as we always do um, as we approach October. But some of, some of the successes I wanted to highlight too, a lot of it has been well received. Um, I do think this education of to department heads and whatnot I keep talking about it has been well received. We make sure they get what we're trying to do here. Um, the ranking system I'm pretty proud of. I think it's working r really well and I think can be a very good guide on how we do take each individual year and at that point really prioritize what should be moved forward. So that has worked good. Um, targeting pro uh, projected funding sources ha has worked good this go around. So I really feel like we've made significant strides in this effort this time. And as uh, Rick indicated, this is a fluid document that will should always be updating it and always trying to tie it to our uh, long-term goals and objectives. So. Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. So I heard, I, I, as I heard you walking through priorities, I don't know, Chris, you had anything that you wanted to add to that? Um, there's only one thing. That, uh, Zach pretty much touched upon everything. Um, as of now, the only project that currently is going to be coming up in May is going to be the highway tip project. So. Um, going along with everything pushing towards October seems to be working. Okay. And that's really engineering costs to be prepared for uh, the following construction year when they come in. Okay. If that makes sense, it's important. Yeah. It does, but, uh, you know, I, what I heard you say, what I thought I heard you talk about was some guiding principles. And some guiding principles, I know that you're instituting process. The process has requirements and controls. I heard you talk about right away regulatory compliance and so you know there are things that budgetarily we may not want to do in 18 but may have to do in order to remain in compliance with the law so staying legal is uh, certainly you know one of the expectations this board has for uh, yeah. all of its departments right and one of the things that the, the taxpayers have expectations of uh, town hall and this board the board of selectmen is keeping keeping us legal um, what other things were, uh, you know, utilized? Uh, I'm, I'm going to guess things like safety were high prioritized, highly prioritized. 
Uh, so guiding Definitely. principles, could you walk me through? I actually want to get at the beginning of this. Sure. Okay. Yeah, so um, again, some of the mandates that we know we have to do, those right, obviously right. became high priority. Um, a lot of um, vehicles would, would appear on this list, and uh, that became difficult for us as we're not mechanics here, and that's right, we're right. kind of talking out the process of um, – of uh, maybe a vehicle at the highway that if it's, it's at its useful life it's uh, ready to go I mean clearly that becomes an important safety factor and yeah. not even to especially with fire and police so that that's one of them um, kind of looking off my list there with others with engineering we have some dam inspections that need to be done and we know that there's going to be work that's going to be associated with those so that's back to a safety issue there uh, both, right? It's both dam safety and compliance with the law. Correct. Our inspection cycles and all that. Okay. Correct, exactly. Right. And then it breaks down to some more, um, Rick touched on this too, with like repairs of building versus really trying to determine is it cosmetic or not. Um, you walk through and it's like painting, for instance, like that's never really going to become a, uh, a safety hazard or something that is an absolute that must be done. But then you're kind of walking the border of maintaining our buildings, yeah, and that's where this uh, system of priority and ideal financial situations can come into play. Sure. And uh, th that's when we would be looking to do stuff like that. And you would also be looking as the first items that would move off if we can't meet our other overall goals and objectives for the town. Yeah, uh, you're right. You know, when it comes to sometimes, I, I, and I don't want to put them in the back burner, the painting, the aesthetics, the aesthetics and aesthetic quality for our community, our visitors, and people who do business with Town Hall or other, other buildings within the community. Uh, we want to be proud of our buildings. So we don't want to get to a point where we lay out the priorities in such a way that it automatically makes sure that nothing gets painted. In the same way, I expect rugs to get replaced before they become a safety hazard as they get threadbare and worn. Um, the community has that expectation uh, that the rugs they walk on within this town hall or library or police department are also safe, and, and we need to maintain a safe environment for our employees. So, so I get it, and it's... Um, you know, I think you're right in the sense that we want to project out five years, and we not only do we want to, we need to. Need to, yeah. But at the same time, being cognizant of the fact that we simply don't know what's going to happen two and a half years from now. Exactly. There may be something uh, where things change, and that our priorities are robbed from us, and that we're given new priority. Um, that's just an adaptive workforce. And folks that can adapt to change and uh, uh, spin a new uh, plan out uh, based on current relative finances, legal issues, or whatever it is. So, uh, and we know we have those employees as well. So, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the thoughtfulness of the book. I've had the opportunity to go through it. I can say I have some questions um, and some some of my own thoughts, um, but. In all honesty, that represents a very small portion of anything I see in front of me today. Um, the only question I still have remaining, and I'll go to the board members in a second, but I'm still stuck on structure first and process. And I wanted to understand, as I total these columns, what budgetary assumptions and uh, rates of increase or, or what type of guidance did you guys use to say that number is high, that number is low? We can do it within that year or we cannot. And I'll give you the example right away. When I look in the columns, 2018 is projected using these numbers and using this plan at about 1.5 million capital. Uh, 2019 is at 2.8. 2021, I'll jump to 1.8. So. I'm trying to get in your head a little bit and understand what guidance you provided because they're, they're highly variable. Yes. And it would suggest to me that something is so critical in nature in 2019 from a strategy standpoint that it either couldn't get pulled into 2018 or couldn't move to 2020. I don't know if that's fair <coughs> assumption, um, but I'm actually looking for the your budget assumption that you were assuming going in for capital. Sure. 
So uh, <clears throat> that's a fair question and something that we juggled around with. And uh, when it really boiled down to it, there's some individual large projects that is really driving this number. Um, if you look at the fire, there's over a half million, if you actually turn to the page, there's over a half million dollar yep. Rescue One vehicle and uh, engineering for both those years with stormwater is very significant. So we, we left them as they were here and we really tried, what our first focus was, or our first process, if you will, was to, um, was to look at the individual projects and see can they may be moved off. Like clearly that was in our cognitive thought when we were looking at these large numbers. And uh, some of these, it was really no, they are um, justifiable in, the, in their proper area. Um, another thing I, I failed to mention in the get-go is we really didn't weigh too heavily in on the school department. And um, by and far, if you look at their totals, it's, it's more than half of this overall list. So some of those line up in those particular years as well. Um, so compiling stormwater as well as um, looking at that, some of those individual uh, large projects, that that's where we'd really have to come down to funding sources. So um, again, we're meeting tomorrow in, with uh, some engineers on the stormwater and Despite those numbers, I, I really think that the appropriation strategy may be significantly different than what's presented here. We know that these costs are driven off of like a mathematical formula based on phosphate levels, but honestly, I really don't have a strong um, understanding of what it'll actually mean for money spent. So until I have that really nailed down, we decided to leave the figures as it is. You, you pull one of those out, and they're, and they're really back to uh, a, a similar average across the board. So th that's kind of where we went with our process there. And um, again, if it wasn't in a proper situation, we obviously wouldn't be able to do numbers of, of that magnitude and have to Yeah, I don't think some of down. these are feasible, by the way. Yeah. I just right off the top of my head, <coughs> if there aren't different funding sources, um, that 5.2 million in 2023—that's that's a roof. I mean, I seriously doubt we'd be able to do that to raise an appropriate of free cash. Yeah, right. An item would be looking Fair to enough. bond, you know. But I'll, and, I'll, 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 you know, I don't want to uh, shortstop the uh, board members. I just wanted to at least at the front page sheet see how budget assumptions were made, and uh, with respect to. Affordability. Yeah. yeah. The other thing we didn't want to do either, you look at the first number, 1.5, we didn't want to move anything up because it could even it out. Is Based on our ranking, the necessity wasn't there to do it in 18. Right, right. That makes sense. It does. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But um, So I have an understanding. I'm glad you mentioned engineering because I think it needs a lot of work. Yes. I was able to go through that with some length, and uh, I, I would agree with you. So I, I appreciate your... Your judgment and your instincts. Why don't I go to the board members, Brian? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, Zach, Chris, and, and Rick, let me you know commend all of you for the work that you did on this. Um, you know, I was here a few times and saw you guys kind of really you know pounding away at it, and um, you did a, an awful lot of work to come up with a very complete, concise inventory of items on the horizon. And, you know, we saw this book a little bit last year, um, you know, kind of see this process taking place as the town kind of transitioned from what was going on with the Capital Improvement Committee to now uh, central government and the Finance Committee kind of inventorying this. And it really seems to have reached a um, much more comprehensive, uh, cohesive level so that now if, if, if I want to put my fingers on any item for any department, I can do it easily. And, and I understand there's questions about cost and things are going to change, but in terms of the project, in terms of the, the, um, the, the, the core element that might need to be done, the information is here and it's in the context of everything for the town. So, you, you know, you really did a great job in, in, in putting this together, and I'm sure the Finance Committee is, is going to be well served by, by having it in, in this way. 
Um, you know, substantively, you know, the biggest thing that jumped out at me is the EPA stuff. And, you know, the town really has to get a handle on that and has to do it quickly. Now, it's been pretty quiet, you know, in terms of our end. We haven't gotten any information. There was a time period we were getting regular updates. You know, we're really seeing that thing through. Um, I, I think the attention really has to be brought to that thing because when you look at this list, that's what jumps out there. And I don't know, I don't even know if I want to ask, but I saw a number of $43 million in there. For, for something, so I don't even, you, you know what I mean? I, I, I know it's a, it's a very amorphous subject. It's, trying to, it's like trying to grab jello, but, you, you know, we've really got to make a concerted effort to have a plan going forward, find out what's feasible, what's not feasible, where we're at, and, you know, we need a strong, you know, push from the engineering department. Because other than that, I mean, I think the list is fairly mundane. You're going to have a vehicle. You're going to have to do a roof. Uh, you know, we know that. So there's nothing that really, um, you know, caused me concern other than that, that whole EPA thing, which, which really seems to grow. So I think that's something the town really needs to focus on. It's got to be a priority to determine this thing through, and, and, and it's, a, it's a big cost driver um it's got to be a focus it's got to be a focus That's going what my forward. thought reading it's got to well. be a focus going forward place, it really yeah. does the other stuff i think there's nothing that surprises me yeah it's not we're going to need a roof we're going to need a truck that's okay although schools schools did uh did was quite alarming in a couple of years but again outside of our statutory responsibilities but still we're part of the broader community we've all got to be able to play together and make sure that our departments get their fair share. And the big number for the school, I mean, like Zach said, you know, that $5 million out 2023, it's for a new roof for the high school. So, I mean, okay, so you take that away, so now they're at about 2.3. No, I was looking at the know, 996 in 2021. That's yeah, a million okay. in itself. That's, yeah. you know, that's in the area of yeah. what we would typically spend in years past on the entire town. So as an example. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you're right. Yeah. I think overall... I think anybody reading this first pass through, they're going to put their brain around engineering. And we know from an organizational standpoint that, um, you know, we've got a new town engineer. So we've got a lot of get his brain around these things. And if it, mean, if it means some specialized consulting work, uh, we do that. We also know that uh, litigation we've joined with put some of this in question and so uh, with with multiple communities so um, we should probably look to get a status update from that and help uh, the town engineer know what's coming down the pike yes a little early but yeah we have our meeting tomorrow I think right. it's going to be uh, hopefully um, an eye-opener and I'll be asking questions point blank from my perspective too and hopefully uh, I, I agree 100 percent this is going to be like its own animal here and uh we really need to get our hands around it for sure because these deadlines are going to start kicking in yeah they and are. when these deadlines start kicking in then we've got obligations absolutely um so we've got to best determine you know how we can economically meet those those benchmarks well the you know the 43 million is not a surprise when we look back from a historical perspective when Mike Santora first looked at sure. EPA guidelines and regulations as it related to stormwater and said, you know, you're going to be socking communities for $100 million if you're not careful. Yeah. So, uh, and, and that's why this board has always been concerned. And uh, for new members, this has been you know, something that's been on the horizon for a long time. Yeah. I think one of the questions we have to answer as a community and as administration here is a change in presidency. We don't know where this is really going to go. However, do we want to be laxed on it if they become laxed, or do we really want to continue down this road? Change in you what? Know, presidency. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's sweeping changes at EPA just today EPA. based on what yeah. Congress did about strengthening their power over some of these regulations that agencies are making, you know, pretty much as a rogue as a rogue operation so yeah. it's uh it's going to be very interesting it is a few months and years okay and i think that might be some reason that it's kind of quiet right oh now. yeah, oh, yeah. exactly yep. 
they don't even know what they even the folks inside the agencies aren't sure what what they're they doing. Might not be, they point. might not be there. No, nope, that was something else that happened. <laughs> they might tonight, not be so. there. Uh, you know, but okay. Well, I'm sorry. That's oh, a, no, that's well, a good no, lead in. No, no, no. And I appreciate uh, what what. Uh, Mr. Chairman, you and Brian uh, spoke about and covered a lot. Um, I feel like even coming from the FinCom to here, this has been a, well, kind of the bane of your existence probably a little bit, but uh, a, lot, a lot of work and uh, real easy to follow. I lugged this thing on the train with me today and went through a lot of it, made a lot of notes. Um, again, the, the engineering, again, not a surprise, but still a little tough to, a little tough to read and, and figure out how that would, uh, how we get that across the finish line at some point. Um, are the, uh, now we have the numbers for the schools. Have they been? Have you been meeting with, uh, with them as well, and and getting submissions from them, or is that pretty much going through the thing? Um, we or? we haven't yet. No, okay. we have not yet. Um, okay. I I have a great relationship with the business manager, mm -hmm. so I speak with her regularly. Good. But we haven't gone into any level of real detail on any okay. of these. Yeah. All right. Um, now I want to commend the three of you. Um, this is uh, this is good. This is a lot of work, like I said, and I know I'm, you know, kind of reiterating what my what my colleague said. But this is a living document, and I think the part that I'm most impressed with, because this was at least a couple years ago, the real tough part of the conversation was the education. Rick, you mentioned that, and then you gentlemen have stressed that, trying to get all the department heads not just on board, but actually learning the process because right. I know it was and maybe it's not that way anymore it was a little frustrating from a finance committee standpoint when you had nine out of ten people following the, the consistency and the uh, and and the, the process now that's not to say emergencies don't happen and we had to run here or go there to, to, to fix things or change things especially um, if it was a safety hazard or something but again I'm feeling more comfortable just based on the amount of education you three folks have talked about tonight. I think that's important yes. because, again, you know, we're not a we're not a we're not a corporation here with 5,000 employees, but the the small group of employees we do have have a lot of responsibility and have a lot of uh, have a lot of you know their decisions make a difference. Um, so if you guys are running a tight ship and can get everybody going in the same direction, that alone. You deserve commendation for because that's not easy sometimes a town hall like any other bureaucracy can be like turning the Titanic yeah. so uh, you know I, I give you guys a lot of credit thank you because everyone's responsible for their and that's not a dig to anyone that's everyone's responsible for their own department their own budget and that's their priority and exactly. it should be exactly and then yep. you have people competing for one another against one another even if it's an unintentional competition so that's when you came in about the wish list and hey, if we can put this off three years, then let's put it off three years. But, uh, but that's uh, it, it's a it's a commitment from you guys, but it's also a lot of work and makes people's jobs tougher that are in this building and and running the departments in this municipality. So I just wanted to to let that be be said. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, no, um, yeah, I'm glad to hear both of you reinforce some of the things that. You know, through the course of my chairmanship, I've been uh, talking with in the background uh, with Zach and Rick. Um, I'm, I'm extremely happy with the, the, the progress that we've made because the internal competition exists. It will always exist. Um, but from an organizational structure and from a process standpoint, we need to knock that down. We need to, to control that and manage that. And uh, turning our eye the other, turning our direction, looking the other direction, giving it a blind eye is not going to make it go away. No. And so we want to make sure this is balanced because, you know, if the police department or the fire department or the youth center is not getting their fair share of bandwidth from uh, the financial team. Um, because that particular year or that particular time frame, they don't have the, the advocacy uh, behind it. We want to make sure that they get their, their opportunity to um, renew programs, refresh programs, not just refresh buildings, because as a, as a service provider to uh, our citizens, this isn't always going to work out in the rows and columns, right? Correct. 
Um, there are groups and organizations with this town <coughs> that believe additional services are, are necessary and needed, and they're not always going to rise to the level of a safety problem. But it, it, it influences the quality of life greatly within the community, so we want to make sure that within this priority, they're also getting their their time in the sun and their opportunity to present a budget and their proper opportunity to give rationale and say why it's important. Another reason we keep capital to October, focus right. on the operational budget in May. Yeah. All right, and that's a great point. So I, I'm going to echo the comments uh, made by the fellow board members. I know we've been talking about this in the background, you and you and my, you and I and uh, Rick. Um, I think we're at a point, and so for the benefit of this board. Um, one of the things I asked Rick and Zach is if they were prepared to come forward with a budget that's theirs. And um, to the extent that they are responsible for organizations and parts of this organization, this whole book isn't yours. So it's not the Board of Selectmen's responsibility. I appreciate what you provided for awareness in some of the other departments that are not under our guidance and uh, purview, but. Um, I would say the next level of discussion is prioritizing those um, because it is great to see the big picture. And this document, as the others have said, it provide that big picture. So thank you very much. I got to believe it at times was painful as people advocate for their <laughs> groups. But department heads shouldn't be apologetic about <coughs> being advocates for their departments, yeah. right? Nope, not at all. Um, as we do in business, the same thing happens in town hall. So thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I, again, this provide con context to the greater operation, having school and all of that. But I think the next spin, Rick, is the departments. I, I, you have them, but I want to concentrate now on the departments under the Board of Selectmen's purview. Okay. We could highlight those up top, showing the others. Are not going to. It's going to help a lot. Sure. So you got you got all the work here. So you yeah. went out and did all the work. Now you get to fine tune those those departments that are within the board of selectmen, and I don't know if if you guys are ready, but you guys are ready the next meeting to come, uh, just do those, and the, the the members of the board of selectmen can have the opportunity to look into just those departments for the benefit of the next meeting. Sure. Um, and if you have nothing to change, say you have nothing to change. If there's things you want to tweak between now and then. Uh, that way we'll know what we're taking to FinCom and we know what we're taking. Uh, uh, what exactly are we looking at for, for the so upcoming we, town meeting? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. What we're going with in the five-year capital plan, that's what the FinCom has asked us to have yeah. prepared and ready yeah. to go. Um, in, in addition to while we work on our uh, annual budget. Okay. So, so what, what this board is being asked to do and what Rick is being asked to do is provide not highway, not schools, not library, but those those departments that come under our purview to give the five-year uh, capital plan. Because we we gave them one that admittedly needed a lot of work last year. Correct. And so we're refining that, and this, you're, you're seeing it in all of these pages. Okay. Right, so senior center, youth center, right? right? Uh, police, fire, those come under the engineering, comes under the Board of Selectmen. Uh, Parks would not, for example. We're going to put together and segregate that and make sure, give them one more opportunity to refine it, get it here, make changes if they need to. Um, as everybody said, this is a living document. We understand yep. things can change. It's still in the planning phase. I'm hoping we have a much better um, game plan, if you will, following tomorrow regarding engineering. So I, I anticipate that these numbers in that area may certainly change based on our, our yeah. recommendations. So Yeah, um, that's a tough challenge. And we're it talking is. about, uh, we haven't, you know, said it, but we're talking about the EPA's MS4, MS5? Four. Four, per, four permits as it relates to stormwater management and total phosphorus reduction. Yes. An enormous task. And we've Big been time. keeping this on the horizon for a long time. I we think the it. numbers will be that large. Just, however, strategy on actual appropriations, yeah. I think, may change. Well, there are EPA grants. There are a whole host of things yes. that we've got to start looking at. And uh, if there's any resources, we know Mike is new in that role. Yep. If there's any resources we need, we know that these numbers are large. We don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. If we need consulting services, we need to put that in. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Great, great job. Thank Fantastic. you. Fantastic. Thank you for working with all these departments.
I know it's a big task. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, let us know how this changes so that we can take out sections and all. We definitely will. Thank you. Yeah. All right, next we have a town administrator's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to provide an update on the um, Milford bus route, Route 14. Uh, it's now been a little over four months of operation. Uh, we have seen a steady rise in the number of riders each month. Uh, the route, for example, had an average of 43 riders per day in December. Uh, I attended a transportation advisory meeting last Wednesday. Carl Domangello of the MWRTA was present. He discussed the progress of the route and a revision for the route. Uh, beginning today, uh, the route will now begin in Milford at Quarry Square uh, instead of in Holliston. So the Route 6 bus connection with our Milford Route 14 bus will now be at Quarry <coughs> Square. The hope here is that it will shorten the time of the bus loop as it will be entirely in Milford. We are also adding a stop at Reliant Medical on Route 140. Um, I know even before we started the route, we received a, a number of requests for this to be a permanent stop from both personnel and patients uh, at Reliant Medical. It was felt that this uh, uh, addition could be made uh, without disrupting the route um, in any real significant uh, way. Uh, also, the MWRTA and the Transportation Advisory Committee are also strongly considering a stop at the Milford Library. There's a petition that has been sent uh, where a number of people, and I mean a great number of people, think that this would be a very uh, good stop to add to our route. Um, the committee is also reviewing the ridership numbers for each stop on the route to better assess future route revisions. We now can get some of those types of numbers. In addition, in speaking with Carl, the MWRTA has hired a consultant to perform an overall assessment of their service in the next few months. Uh, the hope is that once that assessment is completed, we will have much more specific data as to ridership, which could include what time riders are getting on the bus at what stops, for example. This will help in making future decisions uh, to revise or uh, uh, change the route in some respects. Uh, and finally, uh, I attended a Chana Bitters Conference last Friday. Uh, this is to initiate the intent to apply process for a grant for the bus route uh, under the public access priority area for the h &R grant. So uh, again, in speaking with Carl, and speaking with Scott, and speaking with the members of the Transportation Advisory Committee, um, as Carl continually says, one rider at a time, and I think we are making good progress. Uh, doesn't mean we don't have a long way to go, but uh, we should be able to get much better numbers uh, within the next several months. By so, better, you mean more detailed? More detailed as far as so which stop. Can... Um, Parse the and, data a little differently. Uh, yes. Right now, it's pretty much just ridership numbers yeah. per day. Uh, we want to further break that down uh, and let the Transportation Advisory Committee look at it, let this committee look at it, let other committees look at it. Um, 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 but again, all in all, uh, I know Carl with the MWRTA, the Transportation Advisory Committee, uh, so far pleased um, with the progress. And it's only been four months, uh, you know, of actual operation. Yeah. Hope to be doing some more PR work too, to better advertise the route. So to educate, uh, the to educate the public as to where it's going, how to access it, that type of thing. Okay. So, um, I know the FinCom has been looking for some information. Hopefully, uh, we'll provide this information to them on Wednesday also, and, and, and go from there. Um, so, uh, that's all I have on that. And just two other small items: uh, the town hall sprinkler pipe project. Uh, I'm happy to report this project was re completed. This replaced approximately 220 feet of existing black steel piping with new galvanized Schedule 10 main piping. I want to commend uh, Town Engineer Mike Dean was very helpful in this project, as was Facilities Director Carlos Benjamin uh, in their review as the project was ongoing and in preparation for the project. And then finally, per our uh, Finance Director, the uh, Town Financial Audit will begin on Monday, January 23rd. Uh, he estimates it will take about two weeks to complete the field work, so that process will be underway uh, within a couple of weeks. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. That's a lot. Yeah. That's, a, that's an awful lot. Um, any comments or questions from the board members? Uh, yes, just, you know, very encouraged to hear the news about the uh, bus transportation system in town. Um, I, I've gotten great feedback from some people in the community that you know have, have used it and are very happy with it 
Um, I think the numbers in terms of the ridership are very good considering it's only been online for a very short amount of time. Um, going forward, uh, what is the deadline that you have on the uh, Chana grant application? Uh, the notice of intent is due this Friday. I have that prepared. That will be filed tomorrow. Uh, the letters and uh, report in, in support of it is due, I believe, February 17th. The awards generally are given uh, around the first week in March. Formal notification is the last week in March. So by the end of March, we will know, um, one, are we getting uh, a, a grant, and, and two, in what amount. And, and, and it's my understanding and my memory of that, that process that it was really only kind of a three-year uh, opportunity with the goal to be, you know, a self-sufficient uh, one of the things sustainable they, type one of the that's the term self-sustaining so they so, want to so, see the effort on the part of the community right to, to continue the project correct so, so so what I'm driving at is I think that um, to to maximize our chance for success on that grant application um, the town ought to be requesting something less than what was requested last year well, I think that's the expectation yeah that is one of the guidelines also yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Will? Uh, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Rick. Thank you. So just to, to add, I uh, went to the MWRTA uh, board meeting today representing the town and uh, had an opportunity to meet with the director, Ed Carr. Um, so we were talking about some of these things. We were talking about uh, certainly advocating for the library to be a stop. And uh, you know they're committed to advocating for that as well. I see that happening in the next few months. Um, so, uh, short of a written document and commitment, uh, everybody's uh, rowing in the same direction. They understand the petition, they understand it, and have a copy of it. Uh, they also understand it's a uh, big constituency group, an important uh, part of our community, and we intend to do that. Uh, along with that, uh, uh, you know, it confirmed what we knew and what we were told, uh, that their commitment e exists and will continue to exist. Uh, for the amount of funds that they provided uh, last year and expect to be able to do the same for next year uh, because that's been provided by the state and as long as there aren't massive state cuts where everybody might have to tighten the belt then uh, they're committed so that's good news yes now the question <coughs> is how do we make up grant gaps and uh, what other sources of funding are available and you know this board's got to make a decision too because as we develop operational budgets this board uh, is uh, uh, you know we, we should test and reaffirm our uh, commitment to public uh, transportation and uh, as always it comes as a balancing act with other budget priorities and other things <coughs> uh, so we'll have that discussion we'll have it probably in the next uh, few weeks you know, just to, uh, so that we can move forward with our operational budget. Uh, personally, uh, 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 with the short period of time that we've had the bus, um, I'm not prepared uh, to withdraw my support for bus service in Milford. I'd like to see it continue, at least at the level that it's continued uh, in the past year. <coughs> it's my hope that board members feel the same, but what we'll do is we'll, we'll check in with that in a future agenda meeting. Um, to see where everybody is. Uh, I don't think we're going to get cut big on grants or uh, indications are we're not going to get cut big on grants. We're not going to get cut big on, uh, we're not going to get cut at all from MWRTA. I've, did, I've received that same commitment. <coughs> so with that said, it's, it turns into operational budget and we'll talk about that. We, well, okay, can, all right, we can talk, but yeah, I guess the question is whether or not we're ready to embed that in the operational budget or we'll approach it as a year as a pilot, or approach it as a separate town meeting article. Okay. Okay. And I, I want to do some of that in consultation with the FinCom, um, because you know uh, operational. That's a great point, Brian. Operational versus uh, separate article is uh, uh, something we need to consider. I, you know, I'm committed to extending the pilot, but I'm not necessarily committed at this point to embedding it in an operational budget but I can be swayed on that so it's not uh, I'm not locked in concrete on it 
So let's develop our thought process on that and decide where we want to go. Um, Rick, uh, it looks like the next meeting is going to be a long one. Um, but I'm getting the impression, well, let's do this. Let's put it for the, the following meeting. Okay, uh, February 6th, I yeah. think that is. Be early enough from an operational budget standpoint. I'm looking at the finance guys over there, right? All right. Thanks, guys, and thank you, Rick, for bringing that up. Uh, next, we have old business. Anything the board members would like to bring up under old business? All right. I, I don't have anything. Well, nor do I, Mr. Chairman. Um, next, we have new business, and the first order of business under new business is mileage rate. So in front of us, we have uh, Zach Taylor's memo to us. Uh, beginning, and I'll read from it, beginning January 1st, 2017, the IRS will make a change to mile and reimbursement rate. New rate will be uh, 0.535 per miles traveled. And, um, you know, if you recall, there was a period of time over years that the, the uh, board, through its travel reimbursement or mileage reimbursement policy or guideline, had um, fallen behind IRS. And so this makes a lot of sense that we try to keep consistent with it. It, it seems reasonable. Uh, if the IRS is doing it, we know they're not, they're not giving away money. So um, this makes sense. So is there a motion or? Mr. Uh, Chairman, if I uh, just look yeah, the board, if I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but does, does the board want to, in the form of a motion, another option would be to tie future rates with the IRS rate? That's, or that's would you like them to? I was going to ask. Would you like that. us to come back periodically as they make changes or? I'm you know, just throwing that out for the option I, of the board. I'm hesitant to bind future boards, but I'm very happy uh, to, to make that motion and let future boards change it if they want to break away from the IRS. Yeah, we, we should. I like the notification. That's a good point. Yeah. I'll be so glad to make that. Yeah, I'll, I'll be, be glad to make that motion to allow the uh, mileage reimbursement rate to uh, be the same as um, promulgated by the IRS. Seconded. Yeah, I'll also vote in favor of that. That's unanimous. Thank you, Rick. That's a good point. So the only the only thing I'd add to that uh, motion is that uh, uh, it would be important that the board get notification as it changes. That's absolutely. All. Okay. Uh, next, we have police chief, uh, chief and uh, specific traffic aid request. Uh, the chief has reviewed a request from Frank Romano for several parking areas near and around the Blair House. Uh, looking for some changes we know as that site changes um, are there any comments or, or thoughts as the uh, chief has outlined in his guidance to give greater uh, uh, freedom of movement of both emergency vehicles and uh, others to navigate corners that are difficult no I, I would support the uh, police chief's uh, recommendations okay so changes to South Bow Street and Claflin Street we have a motion uh, as outlined by the chief. Is there a second? There is a second. All right, I'll also vote in favor of that. That's unanimous. I thank the chief for us. I know he's doing a lot of work out there, working with the uh, various groups to make sure the streets are navigated, uh, capable of being navigated. Um, this isn't new business, but since we're done, there was a piece of old business I just wanted to make sure that stays in front of this board is the um, the review of uh, Main Street and its crossings. I know we talked about it. We went back and uh, so if there's a, if you could schedule that for February, maybe get everybody lined up so that there's a final recommendation. Okay. Did, would the board want to see that earlier or is that early enough for you, February? No, that. We're, Talking about the crosswalk. Uh, no, that, that's fine. Okay. That's fine. I just want to make sure that Nobody thinks we forgot it. Okay. Uh, anything new uh, for new business that other members have? I, I don't have anything, Mr. Chairman. Well, I do, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, I'm hoping, uh, Rick, that maybe if you can reach out to the Parks Department. Yep. Um, I got a couple of calls uh, just today from a couple of residents up at Prospect Heights. Yep. Um, when we built the park there, or rebuilt the park there, is I think that's. I don't know, maybe 15 years ago now, there are parking spaces that are associated with the park that are public. 
and then there's obviously spaces that belong to the Portuguese club based on their land. Is there a way we can be notified of where actually the where where what spaces belong to the park which and, are public and which, yeah, are, and which is private? Uh, just because a couple of own. vehicles got towed over there over okay. the weekend and. I'm pretty sure um, they were parked on the Portuguese club property, and that's why they were towed. But I'd just like to be sure um, so that I could at least notify folks and let them know where the public spaces are and where the private are. Okay, I will reach out. Yes. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, next, we have correspondence from the chief regarding annual license establish establishments activity reports. Anything the board would like to discuss? Uh, Brian, I'll go to you. Um, you know, we had just seen this in November, you know, for the licensing uh, motions that we had. So it's really a very short time span to, to, to look at this. I, I didn't see anything that jumped out that I saw was disturbing yeah. or alarming. Well, nor did I. Okay. So with that, um, there's no other items on the agenda, which there are not. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, ask for a motion to go into executive session where the uh, board members will be getting an update from town council regarding the uh, update on uh, proposed uh, Milford Water Company purchase. I'll move. Seconded. I'll also vote in favor that's unanimous. It's required. I'll go to uh, members for a roll call. Aye. Aye. I also vote in favor. It's unanimous. Uh, the board will not be returning to open meeting from executive session. Thank you and good evening.